And now to security, where the Northern Governors Forum on Thursday condemned the recent attack in southern Kaduna, in which about 22 persons were reportedly killed on Wednesday night. Chairman of the Forum, Governor Simon Lalong of Plateau, via a statement issued by his Director of Press and Public Affairs, Dr. Makut Matam, described the attack as unfortunate. He expressed concern that the yet-to-be-arrested gunmen attacked four at a village in uh, Zangon Kataf local government area of Kaduna State. The long expressed worry that the attacks on the villages were persistent in spite of all efforts by the Kaduna State government and security agencies to end the violence. And now Colonel Ola Majoigbe, a security expert, joins us now to take a look at this. Thank you so much, Carl, for joining us, Colonel. Yes, thank you. So yet again, people have been murdered in their homes in southern Kaduna. Now, does this mean that the curfew strategy in the state is not working? Now, this is, uh, this is my reaction. It, it is a great pity that in spite of the fact that we have an excellent intelligence community in Nigeria, and I'm talking about the Department of State Services, the National Intelligence Agency, and the Intelligence Agency in the Armed Forces, things like this keep happening. Now, why is it so disturbing to me I can say with every certainty the government of Nigeria under President Buhari today has all the facts about what is happening in, uh, in that part of the country. Why, why am I talking with so much um, certainty and confidence? I was in the system for 25 years. And it is very sad that when the intelligence agencies provide intelligence as they should do, because most of Nigerian politicians are selfish, um, ethnic champions, religious champions, they fail to act. And they won't do what anybody to do. So what you're saying the problem here is... is not lack of intelligence. It is a lack of the will and discipline to act. Why is it so? The kind of characters we vote into office are there to defend their own ethnic or religious interests. So basically, so in your opinion, in your opinion, Connell, shortly in your opinion, Connell, the curfew, is it working or not? Sorry, I didn't get that you what? We see that there's a curfew right now in Southern Kaduna, but then we see that uh, these uh, f uh, uh, gunmen basically perpetrated these attacks while residents of the state were in their homes during curfew period. So is the curfew working or not, in your opinion? Well, I do not know. So I will not make a statement for, about what I do not know. But let me expansiate a little further. Those in, uh, imposing the curfew are just playing games with the lives of the ordinary Nigerian. They know the curfew will not stop anything. If you go back 30, 35, 40 years, the people in that part of the country have been murdered in their homes. Some of their very successful children, including very senior army officers, have been sent to jail. Those who are perpetrating the crime know that their champions in government will not allow anything to happen to them. Now, let me try to say a little further. What is the main problem? Why do we have this, this recurring? It is the same old... Um, settler and indigene crisis. People move around the country and they are free to do that. But you will find one ethnic group will move into an area in which you have an indigenous community. 
for so many reasons, including religion, including traditional uh, practices, the images are there, the settlers will come, have more children, outnumber the indigents, and then there will be problems. Somebody will say, oh, democracy is a game of numbers. Not in Nigeria. We are not at that level yet. Connell, Connell, let me cut you in here and ask you now. The blame game is continuing. Hasn't the state and the federal government failed these people who depend on them for protection? You, you have put it very mildly as a professional a journalist. What is happening is worse than that. Let me repeat what I said at the beginning. The president of Nigeria, with whom I serve in the same army, cannot tell me he doesn't know what is going on there. He knows. Because those days, we told him and told the other people who are head of state, they will not act because of religious and ethnic uh, considerations. How can people be going about murdering people, burning their houses, and then government may, you know, many times, government will not even say anything. So what do you or think is the way ask, out, um, Connell? One of the clowns in the state house, go and impose coffee. Now listen to me. In the last 40 years that they have been killing people in this part of the country, has anyone ever been arrested? Has anyone ever been tried? No. Look at how the Biron people were being killed in Guato. Yeah. Everybody knew they are killers. They killed maybe whatever number. Not one person has been arrested. Connell, so, so what, what, what do you... Governor, Connell, in your opinion, what's the solution to the crisis, the security crisis in the country at the moment? Well, the number one thing as far as I'm concerned is that those who are voted in office should in the minimum, because of the fear of God, do what they have been voted into power to do. Let me go back and repeat what, what I have said. In Nigeria, it is not a lack of intelligence. It is the executive tardiness. They are playing games with people. So until Nigerians are able to somehow manage to elect uh, patriotic nationalists, all of these kind of people running around in the place. As I have said, how come that in the last 50 years, not one person has been arrested in that place and prosecuted? They know what they're doing. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Colonel. You, your, point, your points have, have gotten across, indeed, that the executive does need to step up and take action. Thank you so much uh, for joining us, Colonel, there. Yeah, God bless you. Thank you.